there's a Twitter account uh, called Vocal Distance. And uh, this account, this is, it, it's mind blowing, particularly as, as you are having conversations about sending your kids back to school. Uh, th- this is crazy. Um, this is a screenshot, he says. It's a Twitter thread of people saying two plus two equals five. Uh, you read that right. Two plus two equals five. Among them are teachers, educators, and professors who plan on teaching this stuff to your children. So let's talk about what's going on here, why they're doing this, and how we can stop it. To start, let's look at exactly what they say as how they argue here is very important. They don't say 2 plus 2 equals 4 is false. They don't say 2 plus 2 always equals 5. What they say is 2 plus 2 can sometimes equal 5 and that 2 plus 2 doesn't always equal 4. Read that again. 2 plus 2 can sometimes equal 5 and 2 plus 2 doesn't always equal 4. These are woke academics and they're not arguing that 2 plus 2 always equals 5, nor are they arguing that 2 plus 2 never equals 4. They are arguing instead that no universally correct answer to 2 plus 2 is objectively true in all situations. They aren't falsifying 2 plus 2 equals 4. They're deconstructing it. How does deconstruction work? This is one of the reasons I wanted to engage here is because you always hear terms like critical theory and, and deconstruction and what exactly is it. So deconstructing works by attacking the meaning of something. This means that words, ideas, concepts, discourses, art, text, symbols, whatever it used to mean, uh, something or or communicated, it gets deconstructed. It means to destabilize it. So the woke crowd destabilizes meaning because when a thing's meaning is not stable and clear and defined, the meaning of the thing can be redefined and distorted. Then people can come to any conclusion they want about it. Here's an example from Art Architecture and International Relations. Uh, that he puts up, uh, Postmodernism, Reflections and Tentative Directions uh, from the Academy of Management Review. Uh, Genealogies destabilize meaning. They give us another way to think about our common sense without pretending that the genealogical story is the best story. Postmodernism, this is a quote from the uh, Poetics of Postmodernism, History, Theory, and Fiction. Postmodernism is a fundamentally contradictory enterprise. Its art forms and its theories at once use and abuse install and then destabilize convention in periodic ways, self-consciously pointing both to their own internal paradoxes and provisionally, and of course, to their critical or ironic rereading of the art of the past. Here is Advanced Studio Design uh, by Peter Eisenman and Ilsa, uh, Eliza Iter- Iterby. It is in this way that architecture can draw upon the cognitive rather than the emotive and thus interdict power and destabilize meaning. And then there's this, international relations and the challenge of postmodernism. Uh, the objective of Sylvester's discourse, I have no idea who Sylvester is, a repainting of the canvas of international relations to destabilize meaning, place, and identity so as to produce new perspectives, new questions, and new meaning. Woke people think racism, sexism, and bigotry are baked into the language and concepts we use. Since we think and communicate with language, if the language we use is inherently racist and sexist, then our communication and the ideas we communicate will be racist and sexist. This extends now to math. The woke argue objectivity and any either or binary about truth, answers are either true or false, is part of white supremacy. Since math uses objectivity, and thinks things can be either true or false, math must be rooted in white supremacy. Don't believe me? Here is an academic, uh, John Herbert. Math is actually not universal. Treating it as such is white supremacy. Don't believe me? Check out this comic by some woke person on why 2 plus 2 equals 4 is not always true. Oh, boy. Characteristics of white supremacy include either or thinking and objectivity. And then there's, of course, the National Museum of African American History, uh, which says that emphasis on the scientific method is white supremacy. Uh, Now, here's Dr. Rochelle Gutierrez. She thinks math teachers need political knowledge. She thinks math is political, not just knowledge of teaching math. And she created a type of math where humans are no longer centered. What she 
teaches her students is as follows. Let me read you her biography. Uh, She's in Champaign, Illinois. She's a professor of curriculum for teachers. She teaches teachers how to teach. Dr. Gutierrez's scholarship focuses on issues of identity and power in mathematics education, paying particular attention to how race, class, class, and language affect teaching and learning. Through in-depth analysis of effective teaching learning communities and longitudinal studies of developing and practicing teachers, her work challenges deficit views of students who are Latinx, Black, and Indigenous, and suggests that mathematics teachers need to be prepared with much more than just content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, or knowledge of diverse students if they are going to be successful. They need political knowledge. Her current research projects focus upon developing in pre-service teachers the knowledge and disposition to teach powerful mathematics to urban students, the roles of uncertainty tensions in Nepantla, in teaching and the political knowledge and forms of creative insubordination that mathematics teachers need to effectively rehumanize mathematics in an era of high stakes education. She also builds up indigenous principles and has argued for a new form of mathematics where humans are no longer centered. I always thought numbers were the center of attention. Now I, I got a, n- 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 what is Nepantla? N- Nepantla is a concept used in Chicano and Latino anthropology, social commentary, criticism, literature, and art. It represents a concept of in-betweenness. Oh, I'm I'm going to like say bad words here. Uh, now, this woman's paper begins with her quoting Dr. Kimmerer, who states that science and traditional knowledge can come together by listening to plants. This is an actual paper published in an academic journal. Science and traditional knowledge may ask different questions and speak different languages, but they may converge when both truly listening to the plants. Dr. Gutierrez says the idea math can solve anything is a fallacy. She asks why math values logic over intuition and asks students to use logic instead of intuition and teaches people to critique reasoning rather than just appreciate its various reasoning attempts. She then suggests that rather than learning dominant math, students might go outside and learn and appreciate the patterns in bird songs. This is an actual paper. She actually writes in this paper, in lieu of a purely dominant mathematics curriculum, students might be asked to investigate how do we acknowledge, understand, and relate to the patterns in bird songs. Dr. Gutierrez also thinks it's important to ask students to consider how various forms of problem solving bring joy before finally bringing us to her big point. And in what ways might those forms solve problems and bring joy? How do those packages of wings and bodies relate to other packages and humans and other species and imagination. Where does the search for patterns fail to capture other meanings in practice? Does it spark joy? She states directly in her paper, she's not trying to get closer to truth. It's an admission from a tenured professor of education at the University of Illinois, and she comes right out and says she's not trying to find truth. The I don't care about truth thing is common in social justice circles. For example, Kevin Bird, who, the one who, who pushed back on people for saying that two plus two is always four, admits that he doesn't care about what the truth is when he does science. In other words, the woke attack the meaning of ideas via, via deconstruction to dissolve them. They think racism and white supremacy is built into area every area of Western civilization. They're not concerned with truth. So it should come as no surprise that Dr. Gutierrez thinks math has been controlled by global white supremacy. So every area of mathematics might come to the conclusions it does because of white supremacy. So even 2 plus 2 equals 4 might be racist or the result of Western imperialism. So this is where we are. What do we do? Well, you got to go back with clarity. You got to go to school board meetings and say social justice warriors uh, need to sit down and be quiet and you need to stand up to these people. Now, I I bring all this up to 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 start this because yesterday I spent some time on critical theory and what it all means. And interestingly enough, overnight, Tim Keller published a big piece on on his response to justice of the day and the various forms of justice and why uh, critical theory actually is, is the dumbest of them all. Uh, whether it, you're, you believe in the collective or you believe in the individual or you believe in critical theory, critical theory is the dumbest, uh, the shallowest, and the most contradictory. But here's the thing. Uh, you know, algebra comes from 
the um, it comes from Islamic communities. Math, actually, you can highlight the universality of math if you believe in absolute truth. And that, that's a relevant point here for, for overwhelmingly white, woke people in this country that math actually has a universal component to it. It doesn't matter whether you're on Mars or Earth, whether you are Muslim or Chinese, whether you are from sub-Saharan Africa or the, the, the southern tip of Argentina and South America or an Eskimo village in Alaska. Two plus two always equals four. It doesn't matter where you are. That's why some of the, the, the brilliant mathematicians of old were Chinese or Islamic or Greek. Pythagoras was not exactly a white dude. And yet we have this woke society now in, in control of academia or increasingly in control of academia. We have uh, political people on the left who want to give voice to this stuff. And essentially what they're doing is they're defining deviancy down, but they're also defining intelligence down. They're essentially trying to give kids passes on not learning, and they're setting these kids up for future disadvantage. You know, here, here's the thing. Even in communist societies, look at China, look at Russia, look at the Soviet Union of the day. Even in those societies, some people get ahead. They, they, they love to paint this utopia, but there's always an academic and an intellectual elite. And in this country and in capitalist societies, we have tended to make our elite based on a meritocracy. Jeff Bezos is the world's richest man because he invented a product and a service that does the world a lot of good. Bill Gates is a fabulously wealthy person because he made uh, took computing to the masses. People are rewarded for their ingenuity. In, in communist society, that's not actually the way it works. In communist society, it is the people who have the in with uh, the political elite who then can become the business elite. They get the preferred contracts. And we're seeing this more and more in this country. And frankly, it's on both sides of the aisle. You've now got people on the right saying conservatism has failed. What we need to do is, is reward our friends when we have power in the way the left rewards their friends when they have power. It's not an intellectually honest. It's consistent, but there's no intellectual honesty to it. You're not actually elevating the meritocracy. We're seeing this uh, in infest people on the left and the right. But it is worse in academics. And, and the problem here is this is actual racism. When you tell the black child you don't need to, to accept that two plus two equals four, it can be whatever you want it to be. Let that black child then go out and, and get a job as a cashier at a McDonald's where two plus two is going to equal four or you're going to get sued or arrested for shortchanging the customer. Is that then white supremacy? essentially what they're doing is saying that the rules of the world no longer have to apply. But the reason they want to say the rules of the world no longer have to apply is because they want to break down the rules of the world because they believe those rules were the product of Western civilization, which is the product of white supremacy, and they want to write rules in their image. But the problem with writing the rules in their image is they've already acknowledged that objectivity and truth are bad. And so they want a destabilized society where, where they can continue to, to in this um, bizarre, like an Escher print of reality, rearrange the stairs at every opportunity to always give themselves an inherent advantage. See, if you're on the left and you believe in critical theory, you see everything through the lens of power. The whole world does not exist based on the lens of power, believe it or not. I mean, Christianity itself upends the power structure. The, the, the very God of humanity uh, dies on a cross. I mean, how's that for power? He stands uh, tried by, by humanity that he created and dies on a cross. It upends power structures. Uh, what communists want to do, what, what critical theorists want to do, is they want to put themselves in charge and then preserve power for themselves. It has everything to do with marginalizing everyone else and putting themselves in power. And the victim is your kid. If you're black or Hispanic in particular, and you're going to a public school where these people have taught the kids who teach your kids math, uh, suddenly math no longer applies. The great universal program. You know, it, we, what was the um, what was the movie, uh, the, 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 the math, uh, the women at NASA? Um, oh, what was the movie? It was such a good movie. Um, um, one of you is going to text me all of a sudden as, as I'm doing this. Hidden Figures. Yes, Hidden Figures. 
this is one of the great points of the movie, is that math was so universal, it transcended blackness, it transcended whiteness, it transcended racial barriers. A black woman could help Alan Shepard orbit the planet or, or John Glenn orbit the planet and get safely back to Earth because math transcended race. Math was universal. It didn't matter whether you were black or white. Everyone had access to the tools because everyone knew two plus two equals four. When that breaks down by paternalistic white people, you're essentially preventing future Mary Jacksons from ever happening. You're preventing uh, future hidden figure stories from ever happening because you're preventing kids from learning a universal language that is mathematics, a language that is reflected in the universe itself. All because you want power and believe you've been marginalized and you're willing to hold the future hostage.